everyone, I'm Jackie Jing with esports.gg and this is our weekly gaming recap. For our first story, a day off Twitch in response to the recent hate raids against LGBTQIA and BIPOC creators alike. Hashtag a day off Twitch protest was organized by a large group of creators as a way to seek change on the platform. What changes, you might ask? Their demands included being able to hold a roundtable discussion with the affected creators and Twitch in order to implement strategies and tools that would help in the prevention and handling of hate raids. A few of the suggested changes include account age filters for followers and chatters, limiting account creation to one account per email, and providing transparency in the actions being taken by Twitch against the antagonists to protect creators that are affected by these random acts of hate. While some were skeptical about the efficacy of the protest, others were adamant that hitting Twitch where it hurt may just make them listen. The result, during the protest, the platform was reported to have lost 25% of their viewership, dropping from 4 million average concurrent users to just over 3 million average concurrent users. Not so bad for a group of small streamers. Twitch was not the only company under fire this week, though. Respawn developers remove tap strafing from Apex Legends. When we say people were riding over this change, we were not lying. Respawn announced earlier this week that they plan to remove tap strafing in Apex Legends during the upcoming 10.1 patch. The Twitter post and the official Respawn account got an overwhelming response, with multiple pro players, content creators, and casuals alike up in arms over the change. Hey Respawn, I'm watching Tifu right now. I saw that you removed tap strafing. Instead of, uh, you know, catering to uh, console players, those casuals. Why not catering to us PC gamers that made your game? And remove aim assist, aka legal hacking. Thank you. The post not only revitalized the long-standing debate of which input reigns supreme controller or MNK, but also led to multiple threads filled with theory crafting, including one that asked the question, what are the cascade effects of removing the core mechanics of tap strafing? Jay Biebs, aka John Larson, put out a twit longer putting the community's minds at ease that even though the tap strafing may be leaving the arena, Legends, fear not, as redirects and other mobility mechanics would remain. Now, Apex Legends may be removing a core mechanic of the game, but imagine being limited to a game for only a few hours a week. China limits access to games for children under 18. China had declared an unprecedented law that limits access to video games for children under the age of 18 to three hours per week. The new restrictions come from China's National Press and Publication Administration, or NPPA. It oversees China's video game market. The new rules apply to any online gaming device, including phones. And you don't get to choose when your three hours are. You get a max one hour a day from 8 to 9 p.m. only on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and public holidays. What? The worst part, they're forced to be weekend warriors. The change comes in response to fears of children developing an addiction to gaming based on a 2018 study. Furthermore, some say that the change also comes in response to the government's anti-enterprise agenda, including but not limited to the booming tech industry in China, specifically NetEase and Tencent. How do they plan to enforce the limit? The government is mandating the use of webcams, registration with their legal name, and confirming their identity with government-issued identification. Sounds a little bit like overkill. Anyway, this wasn't the only shocking news that we encountered this week. Dr. Lupo and Tim the Tatman are now streaming on YouTube. The two massively popular first-person shooter streamers, Tim the Tatman and Dr. Lupo, have both officially announced that they are switching platforms from Twitch to YouTube. Following in the footsteps of other large streamers such as Valkyrie, Courage JD, the two have signed a multi-year and multi-million dollar agreement with the video giants. Team, join me on YouTube Gaming. Courage? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's me. Tim, it's time. The future is now.
Everybody seems to be swapping places these days, including the 2021 League of Legends World Championships. Worlds 2021 to Iceland, if you're an LCS fan, you've been taken on a trip these past few weeks for sure. Riot Games announced only a couple of weeks ago that Worlds 2021 would be moving from China to Europe, and we couldn't have been more excited. But Europe didn't last forever, as Worlds 2021 is now in Iceland. Our first question we want answered is, do we need a parka? The second question is, can we bring our friends? League of Legends fans across the globe are patiently awaiting the answer to if we are truly heading back to LAN with live audiences, and if so, we'll be the first one in line when ticket sales open. And with that, I am your host, Jackie Jing with esports.gg, and I'll be seeing you in the next news recap.